Welcome to Learn the Sky, your online resource for learning about the stars. Learn the Sky is now on Patreon, so if you would like to support this channel in order to learn more about the sky, please visit our Patreon account. The link is listed below. We are also offering new online courses, so if you're interested in learning about the sky in greater detail and would like a guide to help you walk through the sky, please visit learnthesky.com and check out our online courses. Welcome, my name is Janine, and in this video, we will be exploring the constellation called Auriga. Auriga is a constellation that is easy to identify in the winter sky. It is surrounded by many easy to find constellations such as Orion, Taurus, and Gemini. And like all other constellations, Auriga has a variety of myths associated with it. Auriga is best seen in the northern hemisphere during the winter months, and you can use the winter hexagon asterism to help you identify it. It is a large constellation with a very easy to find pentagon shape. There's also a lot of fuzzy patches of light within this pentagon shape, which are star clusters, and these can be seen with the unaided eye, and also they're fascinating to look at when you have a set of binoculars or telescope. Auriga is often identified as a charioteer, and it's one of the 48 constellations that Ptolemy himself identified in his catalog. The word Auriga is Latin for charioteer, and he's often depicted as a goat herder as well. You can pretty much always see Auriga depicted with a goat or two hanging over his shoulder. In ancient Greek mythology, Auriga is mostly identified with Erichthonius, king of Athens and son of the fire god Hephaestus, who is better known by his Roman name, Vulcan. Erichthonius was raised by the goddess Athena, and during his upbringing, he learned many skills that most mortals would never have learned. He was the first man to tame and harness four horses to a chariot and imitating the chariot of the sun god. Zeus was impressed with him and placed him among the stars after his death. In another myth, Auriga represents Myrtilus, a charioteer of King Enomas of Pisa and son of the god Hermes. The king of Pisa had a beautiful daughter Hippodamia, but he didn't want to let go of her. He challenged every one of her suitors to a glorious chariot race. The suitor and Hippodamia were sped away on a chariot, and if the king caught up with them, the suitor would be killed. A man named Pelops came to claim Hippodamia's hand, and she fell in love with him on sight and begged Myrtilus to betray the king, so Pelops would win the race. Myrtilus was in love with Hippodamia, so he tampered with the wheels of the king's chariot, and the king was thrown to his death. Once Pelops won the race, he cast his rival Myrtilus into the sea. The betrayed Myrtilus cursed the house of Pelops before he drowned and Myrtilus' father, Hermes, then placed his son among the stars. Let's take a look at the pattern of Auriga and dive a little bit deeper into what's located within this constellation pattern. So when we take a look at this official star map of Auriga, you can see the pentagon shape, and it almost has like a little triangle hat on it, and maybe even a little nose. Maybe you can make out a face here with a little hat. Um, you can be creative as how you want to see this, um, but often when I'm viewing in the sky, I really just see this pentagon shape, and the bright star of Capella is very easy to find. So when we look at a star map, here is where Auriga is located. Um, it also has a star that's attached right to Taurus, so if you can find the Pleiades, um, the V-shaped face of Taurus, you should be able to find Auriga right next to it. So let's get some practice with identifying this constellation of Auriga. So before I point out the star pattern to you, let's see if you can figure it out for yourself. So you should obviously see the very bright star of Capella that's sorted to the right hand close to the center side. And then right underneath, you should have three little stars underneath it. Sometimes I call the red, white, and blue stars because that's what it looks like to me when I view it. And then hopefully you can see that pentagon shape. So here, if we connect the dots, this is what Auriga looks like. So if we're gonna zoom out a little bit, let's see um, some other strategies we can use to help find it. So as you look at this picture, hopefully what will stand out to you is the little tiny star cluster to the right-hand side of the screen. 
So that is the Pleiades. It almost looks like a little mini dipper in the sky, but if you can find that, move over to the left side. Can you find the pentagon shape? It's right here. Okay, and you got those three little stars right underneath the bright star of Capella. And again, this is just the Pleiades. Always very cool to see. It's one of my favorite star clusters. Here's another picture of Auriga. And are you able to find that pentagon shape? Can you find Capella? And can you find those three little stars right underneath Capella? If so, hopefully this is what you're finding. So there is a Riga. And if we were to look at other points in the sky, this is what is surrounding it. So here we have Gemini or part of Gemini. And then here we have part of Orion. And then you can see this star right here connects with Taurus. These are the horns of Taurus. And if we reverse back to this slide, I'm hoping you can identify these little patches, these fuzzy patches right here. And these are different star clusters that you can identify within this constellation. Finally, you can use the winter hexagon asterism to help you find the constellation of Auriga. So whenever you're trying to find anything in the winter sky, Orion is the best constellation to start with. It's easy to find, you can find the belt stars, and if you use the four corner stars of Orion, it can help lead you up towards Auriga. So you use the bottom left hand corner star, move it up towards the right, and it will aim you right in the direction you want to look at. So if we look at this large sky view, see if you can identify where Orion is. It's kind of right in the center, maybe a little bit below center, and then use those two stars to help guide you where you need to go. If you need a little bit of assistance, there's where Orion is. Use those stars to help point you up towards Auriga. We're gonna take a look at another constellation picture here. Hopefully you can find Orion, then use Orion and move up. Here's Orion and then move up towards Auriga. And this pentagon shape is just really obvious. It stands out. The stars are similar in terms of magnitude, and then Capella, of course, really stands out. We've got one more large sky view here that I wanted to show you, and here you can see the winter hexagon. We come down right around here, okay, there's that hexagon, but really I just want to point out all these constellations to you. So again, we have Orion, okay and then it leads you right up here towards Auriga. You have Taurus, Gemini, Canis Minor, and Canis Major. So again, another practice shot. If you need to press pause, just kind of look at it for a while and see if you can get it all, go for it. And if we were to point all of these out, this is what we would be seeing. So again, you want to use Orion to guide you up towards Auriga, but you can also use Taurus, really, because if you can find the Pleiades, you know it can help lead you right to that V-shaped face, and then moving up one of the horns, that'll take you right to Auriga as well. Now we'll take a look at the bright stars of Auriga, and in reality, Capella is the only really bright star that stands out out of all the ones in this constellation. And in reality, this is a star system of four stars. There are two binary pairs here. Two of them are yellow giant stars, which you're looking at here. And then the other two are red dwarf stars. It's estimated that Capella, this Capella star system, is 42 light years from Earth. So here is our pentagon shape again. And that is where Capella is. It is the 11th brightest star in the night sky and the third brightest star in the northern celestial hemisphere. So if we look at these pairs of binary stars, we have Capella AA and Capella AB, and they're much larger than the sun. They have exhausted their hydrogen cores and they're becoming giant stars. This is our sun for, um, for comparison in terms of size. Capella AA is estimated to be three times the mass of the sun, where Capella AB is about two and a half times the mass of the sun. And then here are the pair of red dwarf stars that also orbit these systems. 
Finally, we'll review the celestial objects that sit within the boundaries of Auriga. So as you notice this star map, take a look at where the celestial objects sit. They pretty much lie right within the pentagon shape of this constellation. So if we take a look at the picture, can you see those fuzzy little patches within the constellation? Here is where we can point it out. We have Messier 37, which is the richest of the open star clusters here, and then M36 and M38. Nearby is a nebula, and this is known as the Flaming Star Nebula. What a cool name and what a cool picture. If we take a closer look at this, it is an emission and reflection nebula. So you have the stars inside that are glowing, that allow light to be given off, and then you also have light reflecting off parts of the nebula as well. It's estimated to be 1,500 light years away, and its size is about five light years across. Let's review everything we've learned about Auriga so far. It is best seen in the winter months in the Northern Hemisphere and is classified as a seasonal constellation. In its mythology, it's often represented as a charioteer. The best way to find Auriga is to use Orion and Taurus to help guide you to this pentagon-shaped star pattern. The brightest star of Auriga is called Capella, and Capella is in fact a four-star system with two yellow giant stars that are closely orbiting each other and two red dwarf stars as well. The celestial objects that are easiest to see within the boundaries of this constellation are Messier 36, 37, and 38, all of which are open star clusters. I wish you luck finding this constellation. It really is one of the easiest to find in the sky. I wanted to give a big thank you to David Cochran for his amazing pictures and constellation photographs. I really appreciate your support in this endeavor. And we wanted to thank you for watching. Here at Learn the Sky, we encourage you to go outside, observe the stars, and share what you have learned with others. Please like and subscribe, and click the bell to get notification for newly released videos. Good luck with your observations.